Okay, I'm Tony Newbury and I'm the chairman of the Glasgow Heritage Centre here at Lasham. And we're very pleased to uh, have on loan from Brooklyn's three aircraft. And the first one is the Willow Wren, which is up here, which is quite a unique glider, built by and designed by Bill Manuel a time ago. Uh, that's been rebuilt and has flown, but it's not in flying condition at the moment. What year would that have been originally? It's between the wars. I can probably tell you the exact date if we walk around. Uh, we have a board about it somewhere. Yeah, so this is Bill Man Manuel. Yeah. 1933, I always forget the dates of things, yeah, yeah. So he built. See, so he was one of the, if you like, amateur glider designers in that time. So it's a very interesting glider. Yeah. And we are also very fortunate to have all known a gull. And this... So this is a gull three. And this was owned by... Uh, someone who's a racing driver. It's Bora, that's right, and it's painted in his racing colours. And it was the only one of the girl like this that was made. And in, in principle, it's in flying order, but it's not, not flown at the moment. But it was restored. And you can, if you come around, you can see it. Here. So it's a very elegant glider. He would have flown it to various places and around the country and competed in it and did some fairly epic flights in it with his little dog in the back. Really? He used to sit in the back of it. Uh, and it's a very elegant glider. As you can see, it's got gull wings, which was the fashion in those days, but it doesn't have struts underneath, so it's a cantilevered gull wing glider. And it was the only one that Slingsby built like that. And then they went on to other things afterwards. And so that's a very interesting thing. And the third thing we have from Brooklyn, sorry, come past there, is this, which is a Cronfield drone. So it was a pired aircraft here, uh, made by the British Aircraft Company, BAC. And this particular one has a Ford engine on it, Ford car engine, which is very exciting. I should drive a hard mounted on the structure. So we would never run the engine, but it would be very, very vibrational. You have to start it by hand, of course, at the back. And so there were a number of these drones built that were fairly popular, and some of them still fly, I think. So this is another interesting historic glider. We've got to be very pleased to have them in our collection, is it? helps to fill out the collector, the history of it, so we can illustrate the way gliders developed in this country. And we have various other gliders which are sort of related to these in a way. We have now have a complete set of scuds, which you can see hanging up here. There's a scud one at that end, a scud two and a scud three. And they were made in Farnham by Abbott Baines. And the scud one at this end is a replica which flew once and frightened people so they don't fly it anymore and the scud two used to belong to the shuttleworth collection and they've given that to us now and that flew quite regularly and the scud three which is you know the, we're talking about these gliders in the 1920s or something the scud three uh, which was a very advanced glider at that time was designed to have a little engine at the back a retractable engine uh, and that one did at various times. There were only two made, and that one has been rebuilt a number of times. And again, in principle, can be flown. We're not flying it. We don't fly all our gliders at the same time for insurance purposes. But in principle, that one can be flown, and we have flown it. So we have, we have a nice collection of those. And the, the crested wren up there was a, another one of Bill Manuel, so it's like the, like the yellow one at the same time. So I think these all interested things to show how gliding developed in this country. And this is a, a German glider, Steinadler, which we do fly at the moment. Again with gull wings. 
gull wing gliders are very strange to fly. People thought they were right because they look like birds, but of course that doesn't, doesn't, necessarily, doesn't necessarily follow. And they're very difficult to build, as you can imagine. And then after that, we went on to other things. So we're slowly trying to fill in the gaps in our collection now. Here, yeah. we don't have the room to lay them out in a nice historic display. Did I read somewhere you've only been going since 2012? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. It's quite a collection in that short yes, space. Yes, every time. month somebody wants to give us another glider. <laughs> Well, there's people, people have gliders all their lives and they're yeah. not worth a lot of money, not like cars. Right. And they want them to be looked after and, if possible, kept flown. And so the public can come and see them, which is why we get so many. So they've been very, and people have been very generous in making donations for us to build hangars. And I can show you the workshop in a few minutes so you can see what we thought was our last project. EG3, it's a, an American glider yeah. and they were used to train pilots for the troop carrying gliders during the war. And, okay, for D-Day? Yes, this one was actually used to train American pilots and it was given to, the, we don't know its full history, it was given to the Imperial War Museum who then passed it on to us and we've recently done a lot of work on it and now trying to get it certificated again and it has flown a few times and it's going through its test programme at the moment. So and it will be the only flying version of this in the, in the Europe, I suspect. There were a few left in the States. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. But it's not a British one, you know, we, we've branched out into other ones. But our main focus needs to be on British gliders. Uh, yes, we are now in the Gliding Heritage Workshop, which I'll show you around. It was made possible by a bequest from one of our members, Trish Williams, who you can see a photograph of here, who left enough money in her will for us to do the majority of the work and most of the workshop we built ourselves and far from the industrial uh, skeleton of the, of the building, as you can see. So this is the main working area of the workshop. And you can see some work that's going on at gliders at the moment here. Yeah. This is the wing of what used to be called primary gliders, open gliders, that we use for tra training in schools and other things, which we're rebuilding here. And the fuselage of it, you can see up against the wall there. So if we come down, if we go down that way, you'll see. And you can see the seat that the pilot sat in, this is an open glider. And we have two other ones of these, you see they're hanging up in the hangars that we fly. They're very exciting. And this, this one is being rebuilt, you can see the tell it's about to take the fabric off the wing. Yeah. And what age again would these be? Well, they, it was, I mean, a lot of it was done between the wars and after, shortly after the war, a lot of schools and air training corps people started off with these primary gliders and went on to other things. And they would do low hops across the playing field or something with bungee ropes with an instructor on the ground shouting at them, telling them what to do. And then people realised that's not a very good way to train people. And then they started off with two seat gliders, which you'll see in the hangars. And is this the wing form? Yes, this is one of the wings. So you can see the structure. Yeah. So this is being taken apart. So let's have a look at it. And there's various, you can see various bits are being replaced at the moment. So we'll sort of work our way through it and Gosh. replace all the glue joints if it's necessary and then recover it. And then get it flying again? Yes, yeah, with the other ones, we can, in principle we can get this flying. We've got other ones that fly, no, but we like to fly them. And this is really the other end of this time scale of gliders that we look after here. This is one of the first glass fibre gliders. And up to recently we thought we were not going to have glass for fibre gliders because we're too modern. But this was the, the, one of the first ones in this country, a Phoebus. Yes. What yeah. era would this be? It 60s? Was bit, yes, the 60s, that's right. And that followed the prototype one in Germany. And this is all part of that? It, well, the, the wings are here, part yeah. of it. And okay. again, that hasn't been flown for a long time. So it's all been stripped down and checked. And then we'll keep, get it flying. But we can't go too far into modern gliders. Mm. As you can see, we just run out of space. Yes, you would, yeah. And it's yeah. Not, not possible. So, Okay, I'll show you 
machine shop with all the tools that we need to work on these sort of gliders. The saws and the lathe and, and band saws and sanders and things. Uh, and all the dust extractions. So are you able to train people to use the machines yes. as well as being able we, to work One other on? thing we want to do is keep alive the knowledge of how to work on old gliders mm. and things like doing woodwork and fabric covering. You can't write down in books, it has to be taught. Like there's an apprentice scheme yeah. almost, well, unofficially. Yes, and we do have people I don't know if it would be lost, and I'm yeah. sure you'll say in the booklet. Absolutely. Uh, and our other main facility is in here, which you can see we have a visitor centre or lecture room here, where we can bring groups of visitors and give them talks, and we can also use it when we bring school children here to have meetings. So that's very good. The Slings BT21B. Originally designed for the ATC, I've just do it over there. This one was bought from Slingsby's as an uncovered airframe in 1952 by Portsmouth Naval Gliding Club. They, they first flew over in 1953. Um, she did 35,999 flights on the coast at, at what was then HMS Daedalus. And when the club had to move out of there, we brought her up here. And flight number 36,000 was here. So she's a good old girl. I've been flying her for 50 years. So why was she at Portsmouth? Was she working at Portsmouth? Yes. And training? Or this working? was the club's um, original two-seat trainer. And I learned to fly in this aeroplane. I first sat in there at 11 years of age. And you followed her? And 50 years, yeah. over 50 years later, I am still flying. So did you bring her here? I, yes, I'm now... When the club finished with her, the training aircraft, the instructors got together and bought her because they liked it. They liked her so much, and they had her for, they kept her at the club. And when I came back to gliding, they offered me a share in it, and I now run the syndicate of 20 people. And if it sounds like I'm 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 proud of my aeroplane, I am. You are. You are. I love it. So we've got our altimeter. Our airspeed indicator, a G meter, because this is an aerobatic aircraft, it does do loops and things. And then we've got this little thing here, which is, um, we call it a variometer, it's a vertical speed indicator. It's a really old one, it's, con it's original to the aeroplane. If the green ball's going up, you're going up. If the red ball's going up, you're going down. It's as simple as that. We'll be flying, yep, yeah, we're going to take, we've got a tug coming over from Odium. We've been invited over there for the afternoon. So when they're ready, we'll So when you say you're invited over, you're flying over there? Yes, so they're sending their tug aircraft over, a chunk. Right. So we'll take both these, these aircraft out and we'll tow, um, they'll be towed over by the chipmunk to Odium. Yeah. We're going to do some joy rides over there for them. And then they're going to tow us back, just in time to uh, go and find the bar. Everybody who flies in it will have a smile. Yeah. Guaranteed. And how they many like do you think will go up in her today? I don't know. Um, 10, 12 maybe. It will depend on how fast we can launch them. So, so what makes a good day for you? Is it, is it the thermals? Or, uh, two things. One, any day I get off the ground in this is a good day. It's as simple as that. I mean, this would be, I flew this, let me think, Sunday before last, last Thursday, this Thursday, I'm flying it again today. today. Um, but if we get thermals and climb, yeah, you know, this climbs beautifully. A thermal, very uh, even a gentle thermal. Um, and that's it. Nice. Do you think you I've been up at 5,000 feet in this. The record for this aircraft is 10,000 feet. That, but that's a, that's a very rare event in one of these. Very very cold by the time. 